In the Percy Jackson series, there's something known as a fatal flaw. Many characters in the Riordan universe have one, and today I'm going to break down everything you need to know about fatal flaws. On top of that, I'm going to go over what each flaw is for each character, from the characters of the Prophecy of Seven, to the characters from the original five books, and even some immortals that we know about. Now there are going to be spoilers, so there's your warning. Before we start, make sure you hit that like button. It will greatly help the channel with the algorithm, meaning more people will see my content. So if you have a second, I would really appreciate it. And if you enjoy what you see, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified about new uploads. My reach also stretches well beyond just this channel. I'm on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram where I do similar things that I do here on this channel. The links for all of my social media as well as my Patreon are in the description. If you want, give me a follow. If not, that's totally fine. Now, let's get the video started. The Basics Let's start with explaining the basics of Fatal Flaws. Interestingly, Rick Riordan, the author of the series, adapted what's called tragic flaws, which are often seen in Greek plays, and Riordan gave his own twist to this, making this idea fit into his own novels. For the Percy Jackson series, fatal flaws are mental or physical weaknesses that humans, demigods, and even immortals possess. These flaws can often cause the downfall of that being, and even the downfall of those around them. They're especially dangerous for demigods, who are more susceptible to it than normal humans and immortals. This is because they are just naturally put in more situations where their fatal flaws could harm them than normal humans, and obviously, immortals are less affected by them because they're immortal. In the Titan's Curse, Athena explained how some fatal flaws could be more dangerous than others, saying, The most dangerous flaws are those which are good in moderation. And I'll touch on that in a bit. One more thing I want to throw into the basic section of this video, though, is the fact that demigods of the same godly origin can sometimes share the same fatal flaw. Now let's move on to what each character's fatal flaw is, starting with the prophecy of seven demigods. Percy Jackson Percy's fatal flaw is excessive personal loyalty. He would risk the world and even his own life to save his friends and family. He sometimes saves strangers or even enemies simply because he empathizes with them. This then brings us to what I said earlier about how the most dangerous fatal flaw are those that are good in moderation. This is a prime example of this, as personal loyalty is good in moderation, but it's also one of Percy's biggest weaknesses. When Athena said this to Percy in the Titan's Curse, the goddess made it clear that she was especially displeased that her own daughter Annabeth was an object of that loyalty. There were a few times when Kronos exploited Percy's fatal flaw, the biggest being in the very first book, The Lightning Thief, with his mother Sally Jackson. Kronos knew Percy would want to save her more than anything else. I just found out my mother is still alive. I'm gonna get her back. From the underworld? Whatever it takes. Then, looking at the very next book, we see this in the Sea of Monsters, as he drops everything to save Grover. And adding to that, in the Titan's Curse, his fatal flaw made him go after Annabeth to save her when she was kidnapped. And again, he dropped everything because of his fatal flaw. His excessive personal loyalty made him put his own life at risk to save all three of them. Annabeth Chase Annabeth's fatal flaw is hubris, otherwise known as excessive pride, which is actually the most common flaw. Annabeth thinks she can do anything and do it well, even believing she could build a better world than the gods did with her passion of architecture. Her fatal flaw oftentimes led her to think that she could control things that she really couldn't, like getting her parents back together and even saving Luke, all of which we saw in the Sea of Monsters during the siren scene. We know that siren's music sometimes reveals your fatal flaw, as it's actually the thing that they use to lure you into your death. This works so well because fatal flaws can produce very enticing images. Evidence of how Annabeth's hubris can be a hindrance is seen during her confrontation with the Sphinx in the Battle of the Labyrinth. She was forced to answer several questions, and despite answering all correctly, she notices that none of these questions are riddles, just random trivia, and she demands a true challenge of her intelligence, even though she knew doing this could result in herself and her friends losing their lives. Luckily, Annabeth's action did not get them killed, but it did result in the Sphinx attacking them. Also, in the Mark of Athena, Annabeth's arrogance led her to mock Arachne after the Weave had already captured the monster. Her insult led to Arachne thrashing in her prison, causing the floor of the lair to crack and break, weakening the already fragile structure, and this ultimately caused Annabeth and Percy to fall into Tartarus. 
On one occasion, Percy thinks that a world run by himself would be terrible, and Annabeth replies saying that he's lucky he doesn't have hubris, because she knew it was a really dangerous flaw to have. Annabeth realizing this is actually very impressive. It shows that she can recognize and acknowledge her fatal flaw and the mistakes that flaw led her to make. It gives her fatal flaw a bit of padding, and it shows the brain power of Annabeth, as most demigods are not able to realize that. Jason Grace Jason's fatal flaw is temptation to deliberate. For years in Camp Jupiter, Jason always relied on careful choices, compromises, and hearing both sides of a debate. He never chose what he wanted and never knew where he wanted to belong. Notice the South Wind once said Jason reminded him of his own children, blown place to place, undecided, changing from day to day. Notice warns him that such hesitation could kill him one day. And if that's not the most obvious sign of a fatal flaw, I don't know what is. Leo Valdez Leo's fatal flaw is inferiority. He constantly feels unwanted or feels as though no one should trust his judgment. He said and expressed this many times to his friends, and even when they try to build him up, he still feels useless. It hinders him greatly and destroys his self-confidence, even though he's arguably the most knowledgeable on the Argo 2 or in any group that he's a part of. Frank Zhang Frank's fatal flaw is low self-esteem. We saw this in The Son of Neptune, as he doubted his own self-worth, which caused him to panic at the time he was most needed. This also affected his ability to shapeshift, as he could not do it when it was most important to do so. Interestingly though, Frank sort of overcame his fatal flaw after he got the blessing of Mars. Once he got that, he became a different person, a more confident person, and slowly, his bad fatal flaw instincts faded a great deal. And when speaking of Frank and fatal flaws, we can't go without mentioning how Frank was directly related to Percy's fatal flaw. In the Heroes of Olympus, Mars told Frank that Percy's fatal flaw, his excessive personal loyalty, would hinder the completion of the Prophecy of Seven, the big dilemma and mission that this series focused on, and Mars told his son that he must intervene. Ultimately, Frank stepped up and he was a big reason why they won, not just helping Percy with his fatal flaw, but doing so much more and becoming a true hero. Hazel Levesque Hazel's fatal flaw is her past. This was shown by her flashbacks. Even though she ended up losing them, she still remembered her first life, and she treated it like her new life. For example, she treated Leo as if he were Sammy. This is probably the most unique fatal flaw, because it's not something that's inside of her like a feeling or an instinct, but instead, something that actually happened to her. Piper McLean Piper's fatal flaw was actually the same as Frank's, which was low self-esteem. Being the daughter of the seemingly useless love goddess Aphrodite, she thought she was just as useless and invaluable as her mother. She also thought so poorly of herself that it caused her to get constantly bullied by kids at the wilderness school, and later by Drew at Camp Half-Blood. And speaking of Drew and the other children of Aphrodite, almost all of them had the fatal flaw of vanity or excessive pride in one's appearance, qualities, abilities, and achievements. This makes Piper very unique, as she does not fall in line with the traditional Aphrodite offspring, and that's one of the reasons why she's so special and valuable to the Prophecy of Seven group. So now that we've done the characters from the Prophecy of Seven, let's move on to the other main characters in the main five books. Thalia Grace Thalia, and yes, that's how you say it according to the official audiobooks. I am Thalia. Thalia's fatal flaw is ambition. She has a weak resistance when she is offered power. She desires it greatly, which actually mirrors her father Zeus's power struggle with his brothers. We see this very clearly, as this desire almost led her to killing the Ophiotaurus when offered to do so by Luke in the Titan's Curse. This craving of ambition also seeped its way into the short story, The Sword of Hades. Her ambition led her to take on the task given to her by Persephone. Herself, Percy, and Nico were to retrieve Hades' new sword. However, she knew that the forging of this sword was illegal because all the other gods, especially her father Zeus, were to know of its creation before it was made. But nevertheless, her ambition drove her to forget that and go on with the mission anyway. Ultimately though, Persephone had tricked them, and Hades did not actually want the sword, so Thalia's fatal flaw of ambition led to her being manipulated. At the same time though, we see her ambition drive her, as she was so determined to find her brother Jason. It's also a constant theme in the series that Thalia and Percy have a lot in common. 
and this is very true for their fatal flaws as well. She too has a flaw that is very dangerous, as it's one that's good in moderation just like Percy's. Ambition is not always bad, making Thalia struggle against her flaw exceptionally dangerous. Luke Castellan Luke's fatal flaw is excessive wrath. He was unable to forgive his father Hermes for what he had been through. He had gotten a scar on a quest that his father sent him on, and he was even more furious when he found out that Hercules had already done this task. His anger toward his father blinded him so much, wanting nothing but revenge on Hermes, that he went against his closest friends and the only place he really called home at Camp Half-Blood. Kronos used Luke's fatal flaw to manipulate him, and ultimately, this led to Kronos completely taking him over. Luke's excessive wrath made him give up everything in order to get revenge on those he felt had wronged him. Then, by the time he realized it was too late, Luke ended up having to sacrifice himself. Nico D'Angelo Nico's fatal flaw is holding grudges. His sister Bianca told him this in her ghost form after she died, and she even told him that she shared the same fatal flaw. This tendency to hold grudges led to Nico not wanting help or not asking to be saved in deadly situations simply because he did not like the person who had the ability to save him. For example, in the Battle of the Labyrinth, even when Jirion was going to sell him to the Titans, he would rather stay there than go back in the Labyrinth with Percy and the others simply because he was holding a grudge against Percy. We also see Nico hold a very strong grudge against Annabeth for her freedom to love Percy openly and with reciprocation, as Nico was also in love with Percy but could not admit it, fearing that everyone would judge him for being gay. Grover Underwood Grover's fatal flaw is loyalty. He's willing to sacrifice himself for the sake of his loved ones. Many people perceive him as weak in the series, and it's true that he has many fears. But when it comes down to it, he is willing to do anything for his friends, which we saw countless times in the series. Tyson Tyson's fatal flaw is the same as Percy's, which is excessive personal loyalty. As I said earlier in the video, it's common for two people from the same godly parent to share a fatal flaw, and this is a prime example of this. Tyson is extremely loyal to those around him, and this almost led to his death in the Sea of Monsters, as he held the ship together before it exploded so the others could get out. Luckily though, he survived the explosion, but this just goes to show how his fatal flaw can put him in harm's way. Reyna Ramirez Arleano Reyna's fatal flaw is ambition, the same as Thalia's. She wants people to look to her as a role model, and she strives as much as possible to achieve this. Ultimately, this actually helped her in the Blood of Olympus, as her ambition allowed her to bring the Athena Parthenos to Camp Half-Blood and make the Romans and Greeks stand together. And again, this is a flaw that is good in moderation just like Percy and Thalia's, so it makes sense that it does have some good qualities too. At the same time though, her ambition led her to take on this impossible mission, which very well could have gotten her killed. Hilla Ramirez Arleano Moving on to Reyna's sister, Hilla's fatal flaw is vengeance. After Percy destroyed her former home on Cersei's island, she was never able to fully make amends with him. Even after the two had a truce and fought side by side to save the world, in their later meetings, Hilla is still tense and unsure what to do with Percy, her vengeance still playing a part in her interactions with him, because he will always be the person who destroyed her home on Cersei's island, and her fatal flaw never allows her to let that go. Meg McCaffrey Meg's fatal flaw is insecurity. She was always anxious to trust new people, given the fact that she never knew what might release the beast that basically controlled her whole life. The beast took a real toll on her, and she's an interesting case, because this fatal flaw was exasperated by another individual who probably made the flaw much worse, something that we hadn't really seen up until this point. We had only seen someone help them overcome their flaw, like Frank getting the blessing of Mars, not the other way around as we saw it for Meg. Lester Papadopoulos, aka Apollo. Apollo's fatal flaw was vanity. He always believed that everyone loved him. However, when Apollo landed on Earth as a mortal named Lester, he got a new fatal flaw, which was personal loyalty, just like Percy. The biggest example of this is when he attempted to kill himself to save Meg, Jason, and Piper. And now we move on to the fatal flaws of immortal characters. Pandora. Pandora's fatal flaw is curiosity. When she was given what would later be known as Pandora's Box from the Gods, her curiosity made her open it even though she was ordered not to do so by the Gods, and this literally caused the world's destruction. That one's pretty bad, but it really does show you how destructive these fatal flaws can be. Hercules Hercules' fatal flaw is wrath. 
This flaw led to him killing his own family, which then led him to the Twelve Labors, a series of seemingly impossible tasks given to him by Hira. And after that, he still did not learn his lesson, as his wrath caused him to push an innocent boy off a cliff, which then led to him having to work for the Queen, which was the last thing he wanted to do. Arachne Arachne's fatal flaw is hubris just like Annabeth, which as I said before, also means deadly pride. She thought she could do everything better than anyone else, even the gods, especially when it came to weaving, and this resulted in Athena turning her into the monster that we all know her as today. And there you go, everything you need to know about fatal flaws. Let me know in the comments below what character's fatal flaw you found the most intriguing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram to see more of my personal life like my cute dog Loki and some behind the scenes movie flame stuff. I also do similar content on TikTok and Twitter that I do here on this channel, so if you like what I do here, check them out. All the handles are right below me and links are in the description. Over here are my wonderful patrons. If you want to be featured on the next video plus get a few other perks, become a patron today. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe and look out for more great movie flame videos on the way.